and I realized the instant I thought, I'm, you're supposed to go through a tunnel, I was in a tunnel. And I kind of realized I had created that tunnel just by thinking it. So I'm saying to myself, this is I'm going to do an experiment. I'm going to think of some other expression. Like, I've heard the afterlife is like this beautiful meadow. I'm in this beautiful meadow. And I mean, it's a real meadow. Have you ever seen the movie um, Robin Williams' What Dreams May Come? It was like that, except it wasn't paint. <laughs> it was a real beautiful sky, birds singing, there were mountains in the distance, there was a purple haze over them, the sun was shining. It was gorgeous. But I knew I was in the light. I wasn't in that meadow. So I thought, hmm, I created this meadow just by thinking it's supposed to be a meadow. One more experiment. I'm going to um, assume that I've just hallucinated all this, and I'm back in my body, and I'm on my way over to the James. I was in the University Hospital's radiology department, and they had to walk me over to the James for surgery. So I figure I'm, I'm on my way over to the James, and everything's fine, and none of this happened. I'm in the hallway, walking up from the radiology department <coughs> over to the James. I'm walking with my Johnny on it, with his wire sticking out, which I don't think they would really let you do. There was a nurse beside me. I could feel her presence. I could smell her perfume. I could smell that hospital smell, you know, that you can't get away from if you're in a hospital. I could feel the floor under my feet. I could see this orange or purple stripe running down the wall, like this way to surgery. It was absolutely real. It was as real as any of this that's going on now. I had absolutely no doubt that that was Earth, that was physical reality. Except that I knew it wasn't. And I realized that's the difference between what we experience when we're in the body on Earth and what's real. The difference is you're not fooled by it. And I realized I wasn't fooled by these manifestations. And that word came into my mind, manifestations. And I got this huge download of information about what manifesting is, um, that we manifest physical reality all the time, every second of our existence. And that when we're in the light, we know we're doing it, so we're not fooled by it. When we're in the body, we don't know that we're doing it. And so it fools us, and we believe it is real. One of the things that particularly stood out in my mind was the fact that you know, I hadn't seen any angels. I hadn't seen my, my parents. Well, one of my parents had been uh, dead for a number of years at this point. I had a dead sister. I had dead grandparents. Didn't see any of them. So, and I had expected to. Um, I didn't see any angels. I didn't see Jesus. I didn't see God. I, I didn't, it wasn't like, you know, what I had read about. And I was in Catholic school for 12 years. And then I went to Methodist College for four years. And then I studied Judaism because I was going to convert. And I had been reading, you know, Buddhism and Taoism. And, you know, I, I had a lot of exposure to religions. And I had taken comparative religions in college. And it wasn't like any anything that I had read. And then I would switch perspectives and be out here at a greater perspective, while at the same time still feeling like I was at this perspective. And I went out and out and out. And each time I got farther and farther out in perspective, the more ridiculous the perspective below it seemed to me. Ridiculous, but in kind of a cute way. Like, oh, like when you watch a baby and you know that they're falling down or they're goofing around or whatever, you think it's really cute even though you know it's that's not really the way you walk. Or, you know, you realize that they're inept, but you love them for the ineptness. That's what I was doing when I was having these multiple simultaneous layers of awareness. I was getting a broader and broader and broader perspective on myself and on my life and on everything. On, when I look back on human life, it was like reading a comic book in comparison. It was not real. And I was flabbergasted by how unreal human life is, how I could possibly have ever thought that I was a human being. And that that was life. I mean, I could not get over what kind of mechanism it must have taken to convince me that human life was real. 
when I knew darn well it wasn't, now that I'm in the light and I've got all this access to all this information and I saw, you know, the truths of the universe. And metaphorically, I turned around and looked at this world again. I, um, I saw the world that I had momentarily left. And it looked like so much paper mache. It looked like two-dimensional fluff. That this was the illusion, um, and it was all contained within this infinite presence. Reality, there is no separation. But in the illusion we've created here, in this phenomenal world that we play in, um, requires it. It's not that it's paper mache and less than, it's just that it's required to be at this level for us to experience this level of life. The effects of this experience was recognizing that who I am is the universe in form. And it's done a couple of things. One is shake my own sense of self from this egoic physical structure that's trying to survive the best it knows how through you know, a dangerous world to seeing this incredible matrix um, and dance of life that this body is part of, and yet that dance of all of life is part of me as well. There's no separation. One of the outcomes of that is that my deep desire is to help others. To serve. This is a very, very common element you see in people going through extreme trauma or near-death experiences, is that they pop out the other side and, and say, wow, let's go play, let's go help. Um, it's not about my bank account or the size of my house, it's about all of us waking up to more than what we see on the planet right now.